All right, welcome to my channel. Uh, hope you've been enjoying the videos so far. Um, I'm Lightwolf, and this is the Libromancy reading for next week, which is starts January twenty second, twenty eighteen. Uh, we're still kind of getting the format figured out <clears throat> for the Libromancy readings. And mm, as I explained before, Libr Libromancy is uh, doing readings from books. It's using books. So instead of like where an oracle reading, you would take and say, okay, here's a card and here's another card or whatever. In Libromancy, what you do is you take a book or some written document and you say okay spirit guide me to the start you know first show me the page then show me the word to start at then show me the word to stop at at least that's how I do it um, Libromancy um, tell you how I first heard about Libromancy uh, just briefly it was um, I think it was almost seven Nine years ago, it was in 2009, I came across uh, some encyclopedia of uh, demonology or demons or something online. And I think it was not really like a, a purely religious spiritual thing. I think it was for some Dungeons and Dragons group or something like that, or role playing games. Um, but they listed different types of divination and uh, libromancy is one of them and since i have not heard of anybody uh, no psychics i've ever heard of uh you know nobody i know <laughs> nobody i heard of encountered researched um now sure there's probably some people out there as uh, there's always some people doing some fringe thing even in fringe so the fringe fringe, you know what I mean? But let's get to it. So Libromancy reading for this week. Like I said, I'm, I'm uh, working on the format. I want to make this concise for you. So here's how we're going to do it. I've already picked out the books. Um, I'm going to tell you what the books are. Uh, and then I'm going to... Uh, read you the parts in the books that I found and then I will tell you the interpretation so we won't try to fumble around with everything like we did last time that was a failed experiment but at least we know now right so all right so the first book is Catastrophobia by Barbara Hanclaw um, and the page what I do is I write down these notes about the pages. So the page, uh, this this week's reading, we've actually had a couple different pages on a couple different books. So we're going to go to page 87. So I'm going to page 87. I should have bookmarks in these next time. Page 87, and it starts with According to Plato. So Here's what it says. According to Plato, Atlantis controlled the Magdalenian region, southwestern Europe. Mary Sedgast, Plato prehistorian, explores this riveting clue in detail, and it is a bridge to cultures that flourished from 30,000 to 11,500 years ago that have left traces of themselves. Asterisk. The famous Magdalenian cave artists of southwestern Europe depict the main elements of Plato's. And as these things go, they told me not to go any further, even though that cuts off in the middle of the sentence. So then it's page 112. So go to page 112. And the word they had me start on is destroyed. So destroyed landscape. Before the, before the cataclysm, people were much freer as hunters and foragers. Suddenly everybody had to work all the time and. So they had me end on that end. All right, so that's the first book. Next book is called Teen Witch by uh, Silver Ravenwolf. Um, she's got a pretty good reading style, but this isn't a book review, so we'll save that for a different, different video. So the first thing Spirit showed me 
It was very interesting. Well, the magical book it just likes to fly, doesn't it? Uh, it's on this first page. You know, see, it has no page number. It doesn't say preface or anything. And it led me right to something that said sacred space. Yeah, create your own sacred space. Which is interesting because that's kind of the verse that led me to also something that said create your own. So, the next uh, page it led me to is page five. And here's the text. Top of the food chain, well, at least most of us, we have the responsibility to make sure that the planet doesn't get gummed up because we're so darn, quote unquote, smart. And then page 134. <coughs> uh, 134 starts with you design yourself carry more power than any spell you can get out of a book why okay and then the last book is instant magic by Christopher Penchak I believe that's how you pronounce it if I'm wrong go ahead and let me know um, and this the only page in here is uh, page 79 so we go to 79 and it starts with Michael is the Archangel of Fire, while Samael is the Archangel of Mars, the Angel Cassiel, King Jin of the Element of Fire, any totem animal spirits. Okay, so those are the books. Now, let me proceed to give you the reading as it was delivered to me. So... <clears throat> Here's, uh, here's kind of how this happened. I went and I sat and I did some meditation. And I always receive visions like instantly when I start doing meditation. And you know, Ever since I was a child, I've had a, what you would call an active imagination, but I didn't see things or anything. You know, I would imagine things, know I imagined them, and honor them as my creations and draw them or write them or whatever. However, in these, these late days, I realized that almost everything that you come up with is inspired by spirit. Um, because you're always part of a, a team that's working for your greatest good. All right. So on with the reading interpretation. So some of this, some of this came in um, my words, and some of this came in kind of a third-party like I was channeling for a minute, um, even though I, I wasn't intending to do that, but I was open to the process, and I called on compassionate helping spirits to protect me from any, basically, negative spirits that might try to confuse the issue. So, <clears throat> here's interesting uh, for this week. It says, work is a necessary consequence of learning to prepare. It is not a bad thing unless you overwork and tax the body and don't honor it and love it and give it time to heal. This should take no more than two days in most cases, but some require seven, some 21, others more. Cataclysm, deluge, and freer as hunters and forages. Now is the time to start getting back to nature. Those kooky preppers have it more right than the rest of us on most things. Does that mean you should quit your corporate 9 to 5? Not necessarily. This week's spirit is calling you to get back into nature. Have you been feeling stuck at work like you've hit a plateau? Spending time outside standing barefoot on the soil, grounding for 10 minutes will help many. Uh, for some, it's not practical due to the snow and ice and winter weather. Well, start where you are and do what you can. For instance, if you work in a corporate environment, cubicle or office or whatever, bring two small cactus plants to work. Cactus because they don't require much water and it's hard to kill them. So they will thrive as you're getting used to taking care of plants at work, etc. Um, and sit them by your computer screen, you know, one on either side. And they will help absorb EMF and also will start to connect you with nature. It's better to have some than none. Start slow if you need to. This is important to do this week. You don't need to become a tree hugger 
And this is what they said. You don't need to become a tree hugger now. <laughs> but it would help. Okay. Uh, a little more serious note. Um, I'm sorry I have to give you guys this, this message. And it may be literal. Try not to freak out and understand that it might also be figurative and it's all it's doing is talking about how does this affect your life you look at yourself personally this is about what are you going to do personally internally to make sure you're ready for what comes next this is a god is going to trouble the waters this is the message i'm getting we must begin to prepare how quit fooling around and feeling sorry for yourself Whatever your profession is, your mission is love. So why don't you show it? Start every day by giving gratitude for all you have and giving thanks to the universe for troubles that are for the troubles that are not yours. So for instance, you wake up and you've you know, maybe you've got uh, a chronic illness like I do. I've got, you know, bowel issues, IBS, etc. Maybe you've got IBS, but you wake up and you say Thank you, Lord, Universe, Spirit, for everything that I have. Thank you for my fingers and toes. And this is positive thanks. You give me thanks for things you do have. And then you give thanks for things you don't have that you don't want, which would be something like, uh, I'm so happy and grateful that I'm not stuck in a pit in Africa in the hot desert with no food after having been being, you know, beaten by... Um, merciless uh, thieves or something. Something like that. I'm so happy and grateful I have all my arms that I didn't lose one arm in Vietnam or something like that. I don't have to go around wearing a hook. You know, I'm so happy and grateful that all my children are alive. You know, these kinds of things. Okay. That last one was a positive one, but you get the idea. Um... In this seemingly silly game, you will train your brain to let light and love in so that you have more to give without feeling drained. Without feeling drained. When you give to others, you find out that you do have enough and that God does provide. Next. Are wolves and ravens top of the food chain? No, humans are. So why do they act like such idiots then? Humans, not the wolves and ravens. With great power comes great responsibility. It is up to all of us, brothers and sisters, to care for the earth. How do we do that? Simple. If you realize that the earth is a living organism with multi-level systems that interact and intertwine, much like we have nervous systems, circulatory systems, and bone structure, for instance, earth has ley lines, womb chakras, which are being plugged or siphoned by ancient buildings at sacred sites. And, you know, mountains and uh, ridges and such. Uh, the important part is this. So-called natural disasters don't just come out of nowhere. They represent the vibrations and feelings and subconscious of a vast number of humans simultaneously. If a great majority of people in California, for instance, are angry about something, let's say sanctuary cities, as it were, would it not stand to reason, then, that it might manifest as tornadoes and tidal waves and, of course, earthquakes uh, and wildfires, even? Uh, off the coast of Los Angeles, Baja, and San Diego. This is a clue. They're, they're indicating that those are cities to watch for activity um, in the next coming week. Also, on a practical material level, consider all the non-biodegradable refuse that happens in sanctuary cities. Uh, compassion is what we need. But how is it being compassionate to tell your neighbors, friends, and co-workers who worked hard and sacrificed to get where they are that all their effort was for nothing? There is a certain necessity to what is going on, and it is this. We must learn to discern between being loving and being kind. G 
Jesus never wanted the average person to give all their things away. He only wanted them to be willing. This is a personal issue, not one to be legislated by the state. So let's talk about kindness. Kindness is often not the most loving thing you can do for someone's soul and often does more harm than good. Loving can be gentle and it can be and it can come as firm tough love. We are not talking about beating or assaulting each other. Though for many of you a good spanking between the ages of 5 and 7 can be beneficial. More than the current method. Spankings are only done with the soft flesh part of the hand that includes palm, fingers and thumb. <clears throat> Next, get out of your books, movies, and TV this week and go make your own stories. Spirit says this is very important. Go into the snow and make snow angels with your kids. Help shovel people out. Bake warm bread and stew for your elderly neighbors. Make your own stories. Then write them down or vlog them online. Vlog, you know. Uh, Share your story with the world. There are things you know that you take for granted or that you think everyone knows this or it's common sense, but it's really not anymore. And essentially, by not sharing your stories, you are robbing the world of the gift of you that God gave upon the earth. I feel very strongly that many of you watching or some of you are interested in your Native American heritage. Know that not all tribes are the same and everywhere you go, there are assholes and angels. Spirit is showing me that this week, try to connect more with your ancestors through language. If you have some Navajo blood, for instance, and I'm mostly talking to mixed race people who aren't pure blood nor official tribal members, uh, although they can do it too. Go online and learn some words uh, in Navajo from videos. The first word you see is what you should learn. The same goes for Cherokee, Cree, Seminole, Blackfoot, Crows, Iroquois, Meskwaki, Sock, Fox, Iowa, Sioux, etc. Uh, it is important to begin to bring back the language of your ancestors. If you are of European or Norse descent, then begin to connect with your ancestors this week by learning one Gaelic or Icelandic word. Um, or even Sami, to those that feel connected to the uh, Finnish uh, shaman originators. Same if you have Punjabi, Chinese, Mongolian, Arabian, Nigerian, etc. ancestry. Does your language have a language reclamation project? This carries more power than just learning history. Finally, freely call on Archangel Michael this week. He has infinite, or at least to our human comprehension, bandwidth and can handle the prayers of everyone on earth, including the animals and plants, a million times over. But you must remain open for the answer from spirit. Whenever you pray, your prayer is often answered instantly, not fulfilled, but acknowledged with a sign. The fulfillment comes later, but the sign is instant. For instance, you ask for this or that in prayer, then you see a crow, squirrel, raven, or cardinal fly by the window, or somebody knocks at the door wearing all blue, or your eyes glance automatically at the clock and see it's 3.15 p.m. These are all signs. If you search your heart and research the web, answers will be forthcoming. Red is a very powerful color this week. Wear it if you are cold and chilly like most of us are in fact let me just take a moment to let you guys know i'm in southern alabama and it usually doesn't get under 40 this time of year is what they tell me uh it's been in the low 25s and right now this house the area that i'm in this room feels like i'm in tibet somewhere you know because i got my buddhist flags and my spiritual things and and it's freaking cold I know what the monks must have felt like in Tibet, you know, trying to write and uh, 
possibly in Lindisfarne in, in Ireland, you know, trying to scribe stuff down. Uh, anyway, back to the message. And we're wrapping up. This is the last part, actually. Red is a very powerful color this week. Wear it if you are cold and chilly. Work with the element of fire safely. And learn to call on Archangel Michael to help you create warmth in your body, your relationships, and in your heart. And if you look online, there's a, there's a good prayer for Archangel Michael. A friend on Facebook gave it to me one time when I was having trouble. Let's see if I can find it, but I don't think I can. So just Google Archangel Michael prayer. And I think it's actually Catholic, which doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. Oh, thank you for watching. I hope this video has been informative and helps you in the coming week. And be sure to uh, like and subscribe if this information touched you in any way. And let me know if if uh, if my words, these words that I'm, uh, well, essentially channeling, you know, spirit gives me the words. I'm inspired um, by something higher than myself. If these words inspired you or resonated with you or really clicked for you for so, in some way and helped you to change your life. Um, thank you. We love you. And so it is. Namaste and have a great week.